So, good morning everyone and welcome to this uh, meeting of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. Uh, welcome councillors, staff, uh, members of the public. I wouldn't normally do this but I want to offer a particularly warm welcome to um, June Graham today because I had a bit of a start this morning when I read in the death notices that June Graham had passed away but it was in Nelson so... Sorry, uh, I'm still here. No, no, that <laughs> <laughs> and, and very warm welcome to you too June. I was, uh, Took me a bit to get back on back on track, but anyway, um, I will take us through the prayer to start our meeting. O oh God, our Creator, bless us as we gather today for this meeting. Guide our minds and hearts so that we will work for the good of our community and help all your people. Teach us to be generous in our outlook, courageous in the face of difficulty, and wise in our decisions. We ask this grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Right. So, apologies for all that stuff. Good morning, Mr. Mohi. Uh, notices this morning. We have um, any notices? Yes, um, uh, seek permission to leave at three o'clock. Three o'clock. Let's get to plane. Thank you. We would hope to be well and truly finished by three o'clock. We'll see how we go. Uh, conflict of interest declarations for today. Well, forever. <laughs> so any there, conflict? There, there uh, any conflict with Councillor uh, Bevan's tie? <laughs> That's a very smart tie, actually, uh, Mr. Moy. Okay, the minutes. Let's uh, move on. So the meeting of the 27th of April, for accuracy please, page 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6, page 7, page 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Page 13, page 14, finishing with 15. Someone happy to move that that's a true and correct record. Thank you, Councillor Scott. We have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Dick. I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. The contrary, no. Carried. Matters arising from those minutes. Councillor Bevan. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, two things. Um, firstly, in relation to um, the bottom of page 2, um, dealing with the uh, water e user agreement and your meeting, Liz, with lawyers to discuss that, or with ASPRIC to discuss it and to discuss uh, priority flows. Can you give us an update or are you planning to bring a paper to us? Or Yes, we've had an initial meeting with um, HBRIC, both myself and Andrew Wears. We've looked at the, um, if you like, the uh, term sheet for a water user agreement and looked at actually what applies and um, uh, and, and what may not because there will be different uh, aspects to uh, potential council water user agreement such as point of delivery not you know not being able to be specified for example um, so we've gone through that in terms of the priority flows we have had uh, some discussion with HBRIC we haven't uh, reached any agreement yet on that, but we certainly, um, if you, um, we would like to be able to report as much as possible in the officer's report when you consider the submissions on the long-term plan amendment. Um, and so we're not quite at that point yet, but we're certainly, um, our aim is to be able to provide you with as much detail as possible at that time. Okay, so it'll come up during the yes. submission process on yes. our annual Which plan. is on the 8th. Yes, okay. yeah, but you'll get that information next week. Yeah sent out next week. Okay. I, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. I've got one other thing, but I'm happy to sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> page three, um, uh, Councillor Hewitt um, made a personal statement in, in response to uh, m um, suggestions uh, that she had a conflict of interest. Um, are you satisfied that the statement that's made there has adequately dealt with the matter of conflict for Councillor Hewitt and are you satisfied that no other councillor has any conflict or of interest or could be accused of predetermination on the matter of discussion with the dam? 
through you, Mr Chair. I mean, that's a decision for each individual councillor to make of their own accord. It's not something that uh, needs or meets needs to meet the satisfaction of, of either the chairman, except in relation to his own personal circumstances, um, or, or of the council. Are you planning to give councillors advice on that matter? Yes. So if you're planning to give councillors advice, do you think it would be, se two things, firstly, do you think it would be sensible um, in the interest of natural justice that they had an opportunity to respond to those things? And secondly, do you think it would be of public interest and therefore should, should be done in some sort of public, public way or the information should be released publicly? So first of all, the, um, uh, in terms of natural justice, yes, I agree. If there are any um, inaccuracies, um, then they should be uh, brought to my attention so that they can be corrected. That's the first thing. The second is in relation to whether or not it is in the uh, public interest. Look, I had um, I debated with myself around that as well. So I'll certainly be guided by um, uh, by the general consensus of, around the table about whether or not that should be uh, put out into the public domain. I'm, I'm relaxed either way. Councillor Belford. Yeah, on the same page, um, on the same page three, there's a reference to two queries that were made about uh, uh, access to legal advice. One on the um, one on the uh, latest memorandum of, or water user agreement, I should say, and the other on uh, a different issue regarding an independent panel review panel. This, these didn't materialize as, as action items, but there was an exchange of, of emails about this. So could you indicate one way or the other whether, whether we are going to receive an opportunity to meet with council on either of these issues? So sorry, can you just clarify? So the first issue is around... It's on the top paragraph of page three. There was a query about the legal review of the updated agreement as part of the council's due diligence, the specific request was to have a review by our council as we did with the first water user agreement. Uh, uh, the second has to do with a, a separate issue that, that I've been raising around a condition uh, for the uh, project. Uh, same thing, uh, I asked for some uh, access to legal counsel from us, for all of us for, as to whether uh, that was a correct interpretation or not of the condition. So, are we getting that well, I will advice take, or not? I will take that action if it is a will of the uh, of the council, in its entirety. How do we seek that? Should I do a private poll of the rest of the council, or what? I mean, that's probably something that should be discussed in, in public. Um, how can you? Well, when, when will we have? Um, at, when's Andrew Weir's next in front of us? Um, Andrew will be in front of you on the 15th of June. So can we deal with it then, publicly? Although he's not necessarily the person to talk about the consent uh, RMA issues, um, but certainly the um, the actual the first part of it, the actual agreement, yes, that would be the time for those questions to be raised. Okay. Um, Can we, is it, is it, just to follow up then, is it, is it a question we could put to Hbrook today? Are they, well, no, we can't really, can we? Mr Maxwell's not here. Mr Maxwell's not here, no, not today. <laughs> Should we put it in the, in the, in the follow-ups? What, what's the view? I've, I've got no issue with it going in the follow-ups. I mean, Sorry, pretty, straight, what, what pretty straightforward question, I would have thought. What is the issue again? Oh, it's, a, it's about, um, Independent geotechnical panel, ensuring independence of panel members while panel members while maintaining councils. It's on the top of page three. Yeah, Council yeah. access to the information. So the, I think the question is whether or not um, council, the nine of you, have access to um, uh, a legal opinion on whether or not that that satisfactorily meets those conditions of consent. So, Mr. Maxwell has indicated it does, but mm. this is a question about whether or not. You're satisfied that it does? Well, I personally am comfortable with it as it stands. But that's just me. 
can I suggest we put in the follow-ups and Mr Maxwell can deal with it. If we, if we need to take it further, we can have that discussion on the day, public. Um, Chair, I think it was um, it was wider um, what Councillor Balfour's requesting, and um, as we all know there's been a circulation of requests um, driven by myself to um, for council to have um, access to our legal permit councillors to have access to our legal counsel on a raft of issues which I don't have the skill, uh, the technical or legal skill to understand. Um, in confidence, just our lawyer and councillors. We requested that, and um, I would like a date, or, yes or no, and a date. Well, you've requested it. <laughs> four councillors, four councillors have requested it. Okay, I, I think we're dealing with those issues, a lot of them today, actually. Um, it, it, what's the mood of the table? Uh, I don't see a burning issue here. If we can just, if we can just go back to, to this one that uh, Councillor Belford has raised, which is the this independent panel. Um, re remember, the issue was that a couple of these people are actually employed by the contracting parties to the dam, and there was a question about whether they actually met the test of independence or not, and that's what we needed to seek legal advice on. And I'm not satisfied that Ian's absolutely nailed this and got it right. But but the, the okay. And look, and, and if I can speak let's on Ian's behalf, he, I think he expressed at the meeting that he's not 100% right. satisfied either. Okay. Um, so, so possibly that is, well not possibly, but so that maybe is something that we should uh, look at further, whether or not it means one lawyer being grilled by nine of you or we get some further legal advice on, on whether or not that meets the requirement, we could bring that back uh, as a paper in any event. I'll ask Mr Maxwell to get that underway. But the, the, just moving forward of that, <clears throat> what happens if the con conclusion is the pe pe people concerned do not meet the independence required? So I think we have to have not just an assessment of it, but if in the event that there is something <coughs> not right, you know, a plan of how we deal with the consequences. Okay. Any other matters arising? What was, what did we decide? Well, let's follow up. It's going to go on the follow up list. Yeah. Okay. Follow up items from previous council meetings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Jury has provided the uh, information around the update on leasehold land that was requested on that's over on the uh, the following page, page six of your agenda. Are there any questions on that? Yes, um, if, if I could just ask, ask a question. The, the totals down the bottom, $366,000 and $12 million in the other column, can you explain what, what they mean, please? Yeah, <coughs> certainly, Council. I mean, over the last three years, we've had a lot of activity, as Council is aware. They see them coming through every Council meeting of sales, and that's because interest rates are down. Uh, over the last three years, we've, um, in 2014, uh, 29 sold, next year 36, and next year 45, so it's 110 over a three-year time frame. Um, the um, 110 uh, properties, um, the rents at time of sale is 366,000. Now, most of those would have been renewing um, at much higher rates, and hence the incentive for these people to to freehold. So the 366 is a light figure. It'll be probably two or three times that if you mark them to the um, to the renewal rent. The sale prices, um, they're again um, less or less value. Um, and it's 12.5 million over the over the three years now. Approximately 95% of that would have gone to ACC, paid back to ACC um, to offset the um, reduction in their cash flows um, over the next uh, remaining uh, of the of the term up to the 50 years. I think another 45 years or 46 years of cash flows that they would have got from these properties. They're sold, so they get a an amount in in, in a lump sum. So. All right, so these, <coughs> these properties that have been freeholded represent something like a quarter of that total portfolio of leasehold land? Yes, they right. do. 308 yep. left, and yep. it would have been 400 and something. And what we did was sell the 
future leasehold to ACC? The four future 50, leasehold yeah. cash flows. Income yeah, cash stream. Yeah. The income stream, but not yeah, the yeah. land. That's right. So, and from what you're saying, they've actually now basically taken all of that money, so we've lost a quarter of the future income that we might have got from that source. But we'd all, always lost the future income. The future income was to be paid to ACC. Um, for 50 years. For 50 years. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the arrangement has been frustrated for ACC that we're looking forward to their um, yearly income because that's the type of transaction that is attractive to them. Uh, and this, from their point of view, it's been frustrated. I mean, the level of sales is, um, is much, much higher than they considered would happen and we considered would happen, and this is all because of low interest rates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr Chairman, I think that you. is a bit of a pity for ACC, but it's good news, good news for Hawke's Bay and Napier in particular. Um, and if I think back, we started off with about 2,000 properties. At the very beginning. And uh, as renewals come up, they invariably um, impose severe hardship. So it's great to see that we're knocking it down, and it's particularly gratifying to see that um, we're managing to get away cross leases, which tend to be very difficult because you've got to get the agreement of the um, of the other parties to the lease. So I, I think it, I, I think this is good good news. All right, Mr. Chairman. The second item is around uh, the question was asked: How much is HBRC contributing to the We Are Local Government campaign? And uh, the answer is provided there in the status comment: approximately five thousand uh, dollars. Jointly or, or together with uh, similar amounts from Hastings District Council and Napier City um, to the campaign which ran mid-March to mid-April. Just a question on that. Um, I know it's only a small amount of money, but uh, at the same time, is there any sort of way in which we can gauge the effectiveness of that campaign or otherwise? Uh, look, I'll have to talk to Mr Broadley about that, and um, I've no doubt that local government New Zealand themselves have looked at how exactly that question. and. Um, uh, and yeah, but I can't answer specifically. Sorry, I'll get back to back, back to you on that. Can, can I um, perhaps? There's a national council meeting on Friday, uh, which I will be going to. Um, this I'm interested also in that question. But all uh, on top of that, how many other uh, councils throughout the country have been promoting this program? So, yeah, okay. No. Mm. Okay. Third one, uh, the Monica Research Partnership um, was uh, councillors were providing with with a brief to that at the Environmental Services Committee. Are there any questions? Further questions on that? Um, the fourth one, I'm just going to ask Mr. Wright to come up to the. Um, um, I have a correction on that. Yep. There was allegations made to Mr. Wright. Thank you. Not from Thank uh, you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you. Uh, just to follow on um, from the report to Councillor Graham uh, about impropriety by um, uh, council staff after the uh, tomato mushroom sentencing in the Hastings District Court, um, I was actually present uh, at the, on that day. Um, I can categorically say that nothing of that uh, of that uh, of what was described happened. Um, I also, uh, there were also two other staff from my team that were there, um, and also our legal counsel, Jonathan Krebs. Um, I went to the district court and viewed the security camera footage uh, and saw the entire interaction between staff members of the public and the members of the public actually number six, and it shows quite clearly that the report is without basis. I've also spoken to Mr Krebs and one of the members of the public about the report and they both dismissed it as untrue and have indicated that they'd be happy to reiterate this in any form uh, or any way necessary to defend the integrity of uh, the regional council staff. So I suppose in a nutshell, um, the allegation was made and um, it's uh, without basis. Any questions? <coughs> Will you retract what you said? I didn't, I, I reported what was said to me. But you reported it publicly and it was recorded. So I'd, no, no, I'd like you to retract it. No. How am I going to retract something? Well, you were wrong. I'm not going to retract doing that. Because there's a whole raft of issues. 
the table as a contribution. Yeah, and, and that's acceptable, but in this case it was wrong. So could I... <coughs> that's fine. Okay. Thank you. And Wayne, do you want to stay there for the last one in case there's any questions on this? Um, the local laboratory services um, are water pollution samples processed locally, and if not, why not? Um, uh, and the answer is provided there that they're most.